In a direct challenge to the directive of President Muhammad Buhari, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, has asked residents of the state to accept the old 500 and 1,000 Naira notes as legal tender. Mr. El Rufai gave the directive in a broadcast to residents of the state. During the interview, he described the Naira redesign policy as a weapon by members of the ruling party and close allies of Mr. President bent on stopping the presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, from winning the 25th February elections. He described the policy um, as and said that it had cost untold hardship for the ordinary people of the state who he said are victims of this same policy. Meanwhile, the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Dati Baba Ahmed, said comments made by Governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rufai, on the Naira redesign policy following the nationwide broadcast of Mr. President Buhari are treasonable. El Rufai also said uh, the old 1,500 Naira are still legal tenders in his state and stated that the aim of the Naira redesign is to scuttle the general elections and put an interim government led by a retired army general. Well, joining us to discuss this is Jimmy Disu. He is a public affairs analyst and he's also a veteran journalist. It's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Hey, how are you? Thank you. Um, it's, it's interesting that this has, El Rufai has been waxing very lyrical lately um, about not just the Naira redesign, but a lot of things. In fact, he started um, with uh, the line that there are people or elements within Mr. President's government that seem to be walking against the presidential candidates of the, P, the APC. And today, he has ordered people in his state to still recognize the 500 and 1,000 Naira uh, note as legal tender. Uh, oh, oh, the uh, vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party is calling it treasonable. Do, do you stand by that or do you have other thoughts on this particular one? Of course, there's, there's hardly any educated, enlightened, and reasonable person that would not, not call it um, treasonable. Indeed, if Erufai didn't have um, immunity as, as a governor, um, certainly he, you know, he should have been, at the very least, be brought in for questioning. Uh, because there are two things that, you know, that have happened. The first is that you, you claim that you know that the, the, the government is planning um, some kind of interim government to be headed by a retired general. I mean, that in itself, that kind of accu accusation in public space is in itself treasonable. And then you've gone further to say that, oh, um, oh, uh, you know, to give directives of a counter to the president's directives on this money policy. I think Erufai has to be very, very careful. Um, let me say um, that <laughs> this is part of what we talk about in this country. If it had been a governor from the East who said this, for example, he would be accused of treasonable things, the tying IPOR, all kinds of things would have been wrapped up to it. I think the government needs to make an example of Erufai. Nobody has a monopoly to these things. The government has issued directives as, as to the new money policy, if the, if the notes have been redesigned, and the government has said specifically, it is a, it's not an economic matter, it's a security matter. They are doing this to forestall those who have piled up our own money. People need to know that this money that the president is claiming that people have piled up is our own money. Just today, a video made the rounds. One of the state governors, I think he said it was Zafara or so, had been owing salary for six months, he brought out all the cash on him. I, I mean, I, I don't understand these things. People had better open up their eyes to make sure they're not carried away by this wrong sentiment that, oh, the president wants to make the people suffer. We stand with our president. All the phone calls we've gotten on most of the radio shows and in the social media, people are standing by the president, by his resolve to say that, this country will not be held hostage by any group of people. It will not. And it, it looks as if Erdogan is calling for a fight. I don't know whether that is the philosophy of, of his group, but we are even waiting to see how the government responds to this. Clearly, we want to see how 
the government would respond to this reasonable act. Okay, um, th th those who are making, those who are in support of Governor El Rufai and the likes are saying that this government has been in the habit of flagrantly disregarding, you know, the, the laws or, you know, judgments from the Supreme Court or whatever. But then they're saying that this particular move, especially for the likes of gov the governor of um, Kaduna State, he's fighting for the interests of the people. I mean, I want to quote him directly. He said that the sad fact is that the victims of these mindless policies are the people that elected us. And he's saying that these people are suffering. And so whatever stands he's taking is in the best interest of the people in his state who are not able to eat, to transact businesses because of these mindless policies, he calls them. And, I, and I'm, I'm sure that you know that many have accused the Buhari administration of disregarding certain laws or court judgments. Um, so is this not a ground for the likes of El Rufai to say, well, we cannot stand for this? Two wrongs don't make a right. El Rufai is an educated person. He's somebody I ordinarily would have had, had a lot of respect for. And he should know that two wrongs don't make a right. In any case, we are not convinced about his argument that his fight is for the masses. Where was El Rufai when the, all the universities were, were, were shot? Where was El Rufai in, in, in the past all along where people had been suffering? His own principal claimed ownership. He said, and I quote him that, this, this exercise, this directive by the president was aimed at him. He took ownership of it in the first instance. And since then, the Ondo State governor has said the same. So, the, so it's difficult for him to now come to say, oh, he is fighting for the masses. Has he ever fought for the masses? Has he ever fought for the masses? Go ask the masses who are in, in, in Abuja at a time when he was in charge of the FCT and ask them if they didn't fight for the masses. The truth is that to make an omelette, you have to break an egg. In this instance, I also believe that the president's plan was sabotaged. But he made it clearly, and that's what I like about the president. He didn't hide under anything. He made it clearly. He said that he knows that there are some politicians who have stockpiled money to use during elections. And there is no other time we could have done it than now. If, if he had done it earlier, they'd have enough time to adjust. I think rather than look at the legalities of all these things, which in any case, I seem to align myself with the argument of Professor Odikalu, uh, who believes, and is a professor of law, who believes that the, the Supreme Court had a, a, in some kind of way no jurisdiction in this matter. But let's sort of leave the legal angles out and let's look at the survival of the nation. Stop talking about it's survival. Just... Stop talking about survival here, because you see, yeah. just as just as El Rufai is saying, it's in the best interest of his people. You're talking about the survival of the people. Several people are unable to transact. They have monies. They can see the monies in their account. They're unable to transact any business. So, I mean, I think Lagos and Abuja might be, you know, receiving some form of, you know, ease in doing business. But when you go to other cities, and I'm talking about the likes of uh, Potakot, um, Enugu, um, Aba, these transactions have been hanging mid-air. And the average person does not take a transfer to maybe eat, let's say, uh, Yaba Syria for 500 naira. So um, really, again, are we not the ones suffering? And how long can people, you know, continue suffering like this before, you know, the look, bow look, breaks? Look, look, look. I, haven't, I haven't said that people are not suffering at all. I mean, all of us know that when you want to go into a struggle, when you want to gain freedom, it's going to be a big fight. A man like Nelson Mandela who went to jail for, for 27 years, you can't say he didn't know what he was doing. The people need to be emancipated. The larger problem they will have is if this country is hijacked by money bags, in most cases, our own money that has been stolen. In mo I didn't say in all cases. In most cases, our money that has been stolen. So we need to look at the larger picture. Some people, because look, part of the problem is that this policy would affect some of the people that the president himself would need to carry out this exercise. Because we all know what our public service is like. Only God knows how many public servants are caught in bags and bags and bags of money in, 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 in their homes and various places, in cemeteries, 
in such a way. We can't continue to live like this, Maria. Mm. And we thought, I am sure that by this time next week, it should have eased up because I believe this directive is being sabotaged. The president is working at it. He has said, okay, you can 200 naira, can, you know, you can use 200 naira, uh, you can get, uh, use O2 under the other side by side with the news in April. And guess what? As that today, this afternoon at about four, three, four, at a place, you know, where you and I know, people were rushing to the banks and getting these 200 naira notes over the counter. But it's not as if everything has been stagnated. You have, you have uh, 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 your cards to use. You have, uh, 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 what do you call it now? You can do, um, uh, this one has gone out of my Transfers. Head. Sorry? Online transfer. You can do transfer. Yes, it has never been perfect and it never will be because of where we are infrastructurally. But surely it is not doomsday. Even in Lagos now, Dapso transporters are taking transfers. The Elewa going in my neighborhood has her account number pinned on her port. So it, 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 I am not saying that it is not bad totally. No, but we need to look at the larger picture. And we mm -hmm. need to make a sacrifice. And I'm saying, if you had gone through what the South Africans went through during apartheid, you will know what the struggle will be like. There is no struggle that, that, will, that is easy. In most cases, the people who are, who are waxing strong on, on, on these problems that we have will be throwing these things at you. Where was El Rufai when her children couldn't go to university for, 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 eight, for eight months? Where was he? The, 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 his co-governor in the north. Who, who, who didn't pay his staff for about six months? Why did he suddenly bring out the cash? Where did he keep it? Where was it? There is a respected politician in the north, I think it's um, Alaji Galadima, who says that, look, intelligence reports say that one governor has stashed close to 22 billion in a house, you know, outside the state house. What does he want to do with it? Miriam, Unless we want to be hypocrites, we saw what happened at the primaries, and this is what it is, Maria. Most of these politicians, and most maybe the outside people, I don't know, they have statues of one one thousand naira in volumes that will frighten you. Let me tell you, there is a story that says that during this election campaign, at a place where money was dropped, you know, we call it where money was dropped, where they took money for sensitization and all these things. The wrapper on that money was the wrapper of a bank that had been closed down for close to seven years. Meaning that money had been kept for that long. So I want our people do not get confused, do not get convinced that anybody is, 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 anybody is doing this on your behalf. They never did things on your behalf in the past anyway. So why now? Uh. What I like about all this is that the president has claimed ownership. He has given the reason. You either believe the president or you don't. Okay. Let, let, let's look at the, the after effect of this because you see there's a lot of frustration. You and I have also seen videos, pictures. I mean, I'm not, I won't be shocked if somebody has walked up to you to ask for some money to at least be able to eat for that day and explains to you that he, do, he does have money, but he doesn't have access to his money. Now, we've seen what's happened in um, Benin. We've seen what's happened in um, Ibadan. Um, I've also seen pictures of a bank that was destroyed totally in Uyo, uh, that's Aquibum State. And also in Lagos here this morning, there were calls of Mount 12. We, we saw um, uh, some in Ekbe. I mean, they, they look like, you know, pockets of violence here and there. Now, there are those who are also skeptical about how these things are happening. But this is also a result of this, you know, policy. Uh, how do we deal with this? Because, of course, if this continues, no. then we might not be able to <laughs> handle it. No, I, 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 I think that the, 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 uh, the, 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 now that you have 200 naira that can go side by side, I assume that by Monday, people, all the ATM machines, people will have access to, 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 uh, 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 to notes, uh, in 200 naira. A anyway, can you hear me? Yes, There's I something can. Something disturbing me here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I, 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 that, 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 I, I feel that by that time, we will have more than enough currency to grow. Because the truth is, what you need in cash really are small amounts. 
If you, are, if you have to do a transaction over two, three, four thousand, surely you can use either your card or you can use your 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 your. your yeah, you can do a transfer, you, you know, to the person uh, and, and persons. Yeah. I think we just need to be a bit. I think we need to be a bit patient. And not, and then how come there is no riot in the north? Hmm. You somehow, I believe something tells me that some of these riots and demonstrations might be state sponsored. They how might so? be state sponsored. How? These are happening. How come? You your guess is as good as mine. How come these are happening in states? Where where you the you know you have people of influence in this party, and that is where it is happening. It, the 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 adjusted governor, for example, had accused the former governor of being responsible for what we have now. But I don't want to get into the mismatch. We want to be focused. The concern of most of us, and I'm sure you, if I ask you off air, is that you have free and fair elections that is not induced in any manner. It's going to be a tall order. I know these guys will find a way around it. And that why, if we're looking at this issue, why are we not looking at the implication of what El Ufai himself has done? The example that he is setting. At a time when we have security issues, I think he is setting a very wrong example. Hmm. You know, I think that he's setting a very wrong example and a very wrong precedence. Let's look Someday, at, okay. it, 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 it's okay because it's, it's from, it's the, we will say the truth, it's okay because it's from, from Kaduna. Well, what if it, if it had been a governor in the east or a governor in the southwest who, who, who went to broadcast to defy, would the reaction have been the same? This is what happens when things like this, these are the issues that are now, uh, that are now come up. It's treasonable. It's treasonable. Let, 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 me, let me push you further. Now, um, the CBN and Mr. President are of the opinion that this is going to fight um, stockpiling of Naira and, of course, vote buying. Mm -hmm. But then the CBN governor also has come out to say that politicians are, uh, you know, responsible for the scarcity of the new Naira notes. So if you were putting out a policy to stop these people from stockpiling monies, and then they succeed to take the same new monies that you're trying to float back into the system. Is that not a failure already? Well, the first, I, I think the first attack in this, in this exercise is to make sure that what they have stashed for close to three, four, five, six, some of them almost 10 years, what they have reined in from the public post becomes useless. I think that is the first form of attack. And I am not surprised that they are cornering all the money, all the money, a lot of the money coming out now, because they have the means to do it. And don't forget, not every public servant will be with the president on this. Not every banker, you know, will be with the president on this. So you are bound to have pockets of sabotage. It prevails on the president and the CBN government to make examples of those who are involved in this exercise. Instead of a Mephiele coming to tell us that this is what politicians are doing, name and shame them. Work with the DSS and, and deal with them severely. But it looks as if the government itself is reluctant to, to exercise, to, to, to apply the law. In this case, why did you wait for so long? You have records of these people stockpiling monies. Why did you go after those monies? In the first instance. But I think the president thinking would be that if you go after them too early, if you go after them too early, uh, they will always find a way around it. Mm. His concern, and I like the fact that he claimed it, is that this election is free and fair. Mm. Okay. And that is where my focus, that is where my focus is, because for a lot of people, this election is a turnaround, Marian. A lot of people are saying we cannot continue on this along this same path. Where when it's time for elections, both money and violence are used to determine the future of a country. You impoverish people in the first instance, now you want to buy them with money. When are we going to get out of this second slavery? Mm. We had independence in 1960, 2023, we are still not independent. Let's talk about, because you mentioned the issue of free, fair, and credible elections, which for some people, it, would, it might seem as a mirage for, uh, you know, this country. But 
Um, many were happy at first when this idea came up, but now, just as I said in the last question, a lot of people also are of the opinion that this whole idea might be working in favor of vote buying because you see now everybody is crazy about getting cash and elections are just a few days away. What am I saying? In, in a few days, um, next week, Saturday, we're going to be lining up at our different polling units. If you show somebody some cash, flash the new amount of monies, uh, the new um, denominations, 1,500 and the new 200, I'm guessing that mm -hmm. people will be more open to taking that money. So, again, I well, ask... Well, the, the, yes, but people are no longer stupid. Um, if you did the... If you, did the you know, all day, all day, you know, I work on radio. All day we've been at radio and people have been calling in. And they have a clear understanding of what is going on. Of course, you'll find some who can bear it. Okay? But they have, they have a clear understanding of the need for us to have an opportunity to turn this country around and not continue with this nonsense business that we are doing. I mean, for God's sake, when are we going to move? We got independent in 1960. What are we talking about? We got to move. We took so many years fighting the military. When we finally got democracy, now we have to fight the politicians. I think it's... I think I would plead with my people, bear this. I am sure... I am almost sure that once the presidential elections are done, which is just next week, things will... In fact, as of this afternoon, they've been easing up on some parts of the island anyway. Banks were paying money across the counter to people. And remember, it's not as if your money is held down. If you really have to... I mean, I did about four transfers today uh, uh, for things that I had to do. Uh, you know, like, you know, fairly good sums of money that I had to do. I didn't have any problem with it. In fact, I did it on my phone. You know, and even I, I transferred money to my household, everything. I did everything on my phone. There is no minimum for how much you can transfer. But what is the percentage of people yes. who are on, in your category who have smartphones, who are able to do these transfers? Don't forget, there are people who don't trust banks. You don't banks. need a smartphone. You don't need, but but you then don't there are people who don't also trust banks. The USSD codes have no, not been no, working. Listen, listen, listen. And now they put I, I their think... monies in the banks, but they can't have access to it. So again, they might just retreat to the for, former Look, way of keeping is, their there money. Is nothing, it, there is nothing in this world that is perfect. We always talk about the majority. Even in the Western world, sometimes you do have problems. You have problems with the internet. You have problems with all kinds of things. There is nothing that, that uh, there is no system that is completely foolproof. Do, do you get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that people are not affected. I sympathize with them. You know, but you, there's so many, there's so many options that you have. You can do transfers, you can do all kinds of things. In fact, you can even do transfers at the POS. You can you, you can do transfers at the POS. I mean, so to be to be honest with you, yes, you can pick holes and say, uh, 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 okay, what about this and what about that? What about that and what about this? But we need to look at the majority. What about the majority of us that to be enslaved forever? This who impoverished these people in the first instance? These same people that want to use the money to buy them. They are the ones who have impoverished them to the point that some of them cannot even get these smartphones that you are talking about. And we say we want to put an end to it. And like I said, you cannot make an omelet without breaking an egg. We know how long it took South Africans before they were able to free themselves from the shackles of apartheid. What we have in Nigeria, God bless for I Nukula Kukuti, what he always told me, that what we have in Nigeria is worse than apartheid. It is ten times worse than apartheid. So yes, people can. Of course, they are the ones engineering all this. And what about this? And what about that? What about that? And what about this? Try to pitch people against each other. The bottom line is, this thing is easy enough. And I assume that in another two, three, four days, it will have eased up. And like I still maintain, you have other forms of. Don't forget that we are not talking. We are not saying you can't spend your money. The problem is you can't get cash easily. That's where the problem lies. Okay. And with this two hundred dollar directive, I think that in a day or two, maximum by Monday or Tuesday next week, we will have smooth sailing. In any case, 
I am sure the president. And what happens now is that it is the one one thousand naira notes that these people have stockpiled that the president wants to render completely useless. As you can see, what look at what the speaker also said that he believes his principal was the target. The Ondoset government said it, this, this policy was to demarket their candidates. Can you come and explain to me what he means by demarketing their candidates? I don't understand. I'd be glad to, he's my friend, I'd be glad for him to explain to me. Maybe I would understand. But what I do know, we know the modus operandi of these gentlemen in the past. How money exchanged his hands, combined with violence. And the president has said the issue of money and violence. If it is the last thing he will leave this country with, he will conduct an election that is free, well, as much as possible, of both money influence and also of violence. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Jimmy Disu is a public affairs analyst and a veteran journalist. Always a pleasure to have you here on the show. Thank you thank so much you, for coming. All right. All right. See you. Have good a good night. evening. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We will take a quick break. And when we return, we'll be discussing the Northern perspective on the 2023 um, elections. And of course, the choice of the NEF for president. Stay with us. We'll be right back.